another live review today. I have more for you tomorrow as well. There are three more bikes. I'm going to review all of those tomorrow. So make sure to come back on Saturday at nine o'clock. Well, I don't know. We'll send out an email with the times. Just watch the channel for the exact times. We are going to review those three as well. But those are all fat tire bikes. We have a folding fat tire bike from Turbo Ant, a fat tire bike from Troxus that is a hardtail, and then a full suspension fat tire bike from a new company called Pasilek, kind of like pedal assist and electric squished into one word and then shortened, I guess. Sure, why not? Uh, but, today, but today I have the Avidar. First, let's see who is on the live. We got Michael G, a new member. Welcome, Michael. Make sure to ask questions in the chat. And yeah, just uh, hopefully uh, we can have some fun. Terry says something. I don't know why Terry said something, but Terry did say something. Wendy is here. Wayne is here. We haven't seen the sun for a while. John R is here, another new member. Welcome, John. Everybody say hi to both Michael and John. Ted says, make it a good one. Ray says, how about a comparison between a Honda PA50 and the Red Runner Plus? Uh, if you really want to have a comparison between a Honda and something, probably the Ubco would be the best thing. The Red Runner Plus and a Honda, just totally different. Uh, not the same at all. That's my rough opinion on that. So go check out the videos I put out on the Ubco 2x2. Uh, John, my post on the e-bike legislation was gossip. Uh, haven't endorsed it. So uh, thanks for the update. John is good at keeping me informed on the uh, potential tax credit for e-bikes and whether or not that's going to happen. Uh, are you late? No, you're not. You are here right now. Um, Bill says, I like the handlebars on the Model E. Is this one the same? Uh, this bike we're reviewing right now is a mountain bike. Ta-da, definitely not the same. This is, uh, you know, whereas the Model E was a beach cruiser, swept back bars, not at all. What's up, Steve? Thank you, Frederick. I think we do have some awesome bikes. Yo to Mithras, hi to Jenny, C. Stevens, Howard, N5RIV, must stand for something. Uh, Tim, excellent question. Why do I review other bikes when we should all be buying Bolton e-bikes? Well, there are multiple reasons for that. Uh, companies want to send me bikes for review and i think it makes sense for me to see what is out there what's on the market because if i see e-bikes that are better than mine in some way and are competitively priced then i can learn from what they're doing and improve our own bikes and if i see bikes are not as good then i know we're doing something right and it can go both ways most of the time i would say the bolton e-bikes models are extremely competitive uh, or different in some way than what we normally review. Uh, also, something like the electric bike company bike that I just reviewed earlier. I don't really sell beach cruiser type bikes. They're great bikes, just not something that I have at the moment. Um, so lots of good reasons. Hello to Henry. Hola, Sergio. Hello, Bart. Uh, let's see. Do you see a vendor selling good headlights at Sea Auto Show? Uh, there were a few light companies there, um, probably were decent. I didn't have time to, to really dive deep into those, unfortunately. They were on my list, but we were short on time. Um, Ray, I know they're not the same, but both are mopeds. Ray, I'm going to disagree with you. The Rad Runner, I don't know if you've ridden it, uh, very, very much so lacking on power. Um, not a moped at all. It just doesn't have enough power to be ridden like a moped. So that's why I say that's not a good comparison. The Ubco doesn't even have pedals. <laughs> Throttle only, tons of power uh, would be uh, comparable. Russ, 
excellent question about the Avador bike. I'm going to try my best to get to the bottom of that during this live. And howdy, Steve. Uh, Ray, you own one. Okay, then uh, then you should know. <laughs> uh, if you've ridden any other e-bikes or something like the Honda, yeah, the, the Rad Runner, I'm not saying it's a bad bike for what it is. Uh, Price-wise and everything, uh, I just feel like they're really lacking on power. If you upgrade it with one of our upgrade kits, then a lot more power, something you could actually cruise around on throttle if you wanted to. Um, still pales, I think, in comparison to the power level of the Upco or a Honda 50 of some sort. Um, so that's that's my uh, that's my thoughts on that. All right, now the let's get to the Avador bike. Uh, brand new. I should bring up their their website with some of the specs because somebody already had a question. Hello, Edmund, uh, about the battery, and uh, he's correct. There's some confusion because it says on one spot on their website that it is a 500 watt hour battery and another spot says 36 volt 10 amp hours and 36 volts 10 amp hours would only be 360 watt hours so somewhere the math doesn't add up and here's my thoughts on that the uh, motor that's on this bike, I believe I have had uh, in a couple of e-bikes I got several years ago uh, and, you know, sold a long time ago. They were mountain bikes, very similar to this. Um, they were pretty lightweight. They're actually carbon frames. Um, the manufacturer I got them from made something else for me as well uh, out of carbon, which was super cool, which I still have that, which I've never showed in a video, but one day perhaps. Uh, point is, I think it was the same exact motor on this, and I feel like performance-wise um, that it makes sense it'd be a 48-volt battery. Uh, so 48 volts in like 11 amp hours or so would be about 500 watt hours. Um, but we definitely need to point that out to Avidar that there's some conflicting information on their website. All right, I got their website pulled up. I'm going to share my screen. Um, Let's see, share screen. See, I wasn't going to share this, but since you asked the question, I just want to point it out. Okay, here we go. So you have the Avidar C3 Sport. That is the mountain bike we've got here. So $1,980. Uh, so to give you some ideas on the specs, so that's a sub $2,000 uh, it is a 250 watt torque sensing mid drive motor, hydraulic brakes. Uh, I'll get into the suspension and other things, uh, but it's a pretty good looking bike, uh, just on the lower end of the power level compared to what we normally review. This would be like something that I would consider if you were looking at like, you know, maybe a, a Shimano mid drive bike, for example, that are 250 watts. Uh, because this is going to be a similar power level. It's torque sensing, you know, the components are decent quality, but it's like half the price of or less than what one of those might cost. So, you know, that's kind of where they're trying to come in here. You know, not the name brand parts, and we have the one in blue, but I'm scrolling down here, and yeah, they got a nice integrated battery that's still removable. Uh, there's a picture of the battery doesn't say anything about the battery specs right here. And then if you go down further, see here it says power tube, 500 watt hours. Sets the standard in integration as 500 watt hours for an extended range. And then you scroll down further and it says 36 volt, 10 amp hours. So which one is it? And then over here it says US standard 36 volt. You know what? I know how we can get to the bottom of this real quickly is grab the charger, which I have on the ground over here. Which I had on the ground over here. Uh, guys put all the bikes away and they stole the charger that I had for 
this bike, which I think, I think it was actually a 36 volt charger. So that means logically, then this has to be a 36 volt, 10 amp hour battery on the bike, not the 500 watt hours. I think that confirms it because the charger I remember was very compact, small. Uh, and, uh, you know, we looked at it and we're like, oh, this is really small charger. And I was like, oh, well, it's 36 volts. So you could make it smaller. Uh, the bike did come with a hat, which was nice. Uh, also came with a t-shirt. Look at that. So that's kind of cool. And also came with a little multi-tool. So 36 volts. I, I guess I'm a little disappointed. I was thinking it might have been a 48 volt. Uh, performance wise, makes sense though. Uh, the way the bike rides and everything. Uh, more power than you might think for 250 watts because of that mid-drive setup and the gearing, uh, which is pretty, pretty interesting. Now they say on their thing here, range boost compatible. Maybe that's because it, they have a 500 watt hour battery that's optional. Maybe that's where that uh, battery spec is coming from. And that would also make sense. It says the weight right here is 57 pounds. So reasonably lightweight bike zero to five pedal assist uh pretty pretty standard stuff uh mid-drive motor 80 newton meters of torque so that's the interesting thing is if you look at a you know higher powered mid-drive or hub motor um take for example a buffang 750 watt hub motor typically they're rated at 80 newton meters of torque at 750 watts well this is 250 watts also rated for 80 newton meters of torque so which one has more power well obviously the 750 watt feeds more power through it can go faster uh, but it doesn't mean this one can't climb hills well and like i said it has gearing for that that we'll get into in in a minute uh, but from my initial rides on the bike basically this is a good mountain bike if you want a hardtail uh, mountain bike for just light trails a uh, little bit of single track you want it to feel like a bicycle or you even want to ride it like a bicycle without the motor, you could do that on this, this particular bike. They've got a couple sizes, uh, medium and a large. Honestly, I'm not sure which one I have. I would maybe guess that it's the medium. Um, so the, that's a little bit of details on the bike. And I think, thankfully, I think uh, we got down, hopefully I'm correct on the, my assumptions of the battery. Uh, all right, jumping back to some of the questions here. We don't need to share my screen anymore. All right, uh, Hog Doc got his brakes. Awesome, good to hear it. John Phillips uh, just got brakes on my our hydraulic brakes on his Hemiway. Thank you for buying brakes from us. Bill, no, I don't have any news or any reviews on anything 26 inch fat tire and foldable. Although this foldable bike right here is massive, way bigger than you might think, but it's 20 inch tire still. Uh, weight of the bike, Larry, looks like we just answered that 57 pounds. And uh, Hogdoc says seems a little pricey for a 36 volt system. Here's what I'm going to tell you that you probably don't know. You guys are seeing 48 volt batteries, 52 volt batteries everywhere, all over the place on these direct to consumer online e-bikes. If you go buy a high end mountain bike for five, six, seven, even up to $15,000. Yeah. Those high end mountain bikes with these 250 watt to 500 watt mid drive motors. Guess what? They're all running 36 volts. Uh, and higher voltage doesn't necessarily mean more power. Uh, it depends on the entire system. So uh, I wouldn't say any e-bike is ever expensive or cheap based on the voltage alone, because you have to look at the whole uh, picture. And yes, of course, we have a live picture. It's right here. We're going to get up close and personal and ride this bike because, well, that's what it's here for. We can't review a bike unless we have it in person. Uh, let's see, Ray, 36 volt, 500 watt, doesn't seem worth it. Uh, Rhett Wayne, yes, it's 250, that's correct. Uh, and, and I think, like I said, this is not the same wattage or type of bike that some of you guys are used to. This is a lighter bike, it has good performance at a lower wattage, 
this is like i said designed to compete with i i think like the shimano uh and the other bikes uh let's see bill what is the show your support button all about that's a good question i'm not on that side of the video so i don't know but yeah you can always show support by buying bikes from bolton e-bikes of course uh awesome well let's get into some of the details on the bike let's uh like i said get up close here and to do that the best way to do that is to just get this camera off of my little tripod here there we go and uh turn this camera around so here's the bike first off earlier i showed you guys the electric bike company bike with its beautiful red paint job well guess what now we got a beautiful blue paint job i feel like every once in a while you get a bike where it's like it's impressive how well it's painted and put together and this one looks really nice like i think if you were riding this bike around there's there's two things that are going to happen one at first glance people are not going to notice this is an e-bike from the left side if you're looking and you know what to look for you can see the mid-drive motor right here uh, but from the right side let's see if i can carefully turn this around without tripping over anything there we go uh, you've got the chain and the gears up front you can't even tell it's an e-bike so that is one thing that i like about this it looks like a mountain bike you could ride this and no one would ever know it's an e-bike one thing that is missing some of you will be disappointed about i am a little too but again i got to remember what this bike is targeting it's people who want to get exercise mountain bike compete with the higher end brands does anybody see what is missing up here let's see who can spot it and point out what this bike doesn't have while i talk about some of the other features uh so just under two thousand dollars i think somebody already pointed out the commuter version comes with racks and fenders for a little over two thousand dollars like 300 bucks more has hydraulic brakes did you notice the shimano shifter on the left side two speeds right there and then the shimano eight speed on the right this bike has 16 speeds it actually has a front derailleur and yeah you guys nailed it there is no throttle you are absolutely right this is torque sensing so that's something to keep in mind when you think guys are thinking about the price two thousand dollars you're getting a torque sensing motor which you normally don't get for a bike in this price range nor a mid-drive you're usually looking at hub motor bikes for two thousand dollars so you're getting a mid-drive torque sensing and some of you are probably wondering wait a second you have a mid-drive motor right here but you have a front derailleur you have two gears how does that even work so that's something that's pretty unique about this bike you have the freewheeling mechanism here so you can see the cranks can move backwards so you can run the motor without moving the pedals forward although it doesn't have a throttle so you kind of can't uh but then going forward when this whole thing engages it engages both of those gears right there so you have a nice wide range 16 speeds to choose from and again hydraulic brakes 160 millimeter rotors front and rear RNL is here to pick up there's more bikes around the corner bikes that are leaving today congratulations to whoever is getting a bike shipped out the fork is a brand I've never heard of <laughs> but the quality looks decent it's got a compression adjustment it's not air adjustable you just have compression right here and then uh, your preload um, but the quality looks feels like a decent fork you know easily upgradable if you're going to really ride this thing hard off-road on trails but just a very clean looking mountain bike 
and like I said, looks like a mountain bike. I, I think you could ride this all over and no one would even know it's an e-bike. But I love the blue paint job. I think they did a good job on that. Battery is tucked in underneath the frame right there. Very subtle, but it's there. And uh, that is that is how the bike looks. So from this point, the only thing left to do is pop on it and, and give you guys my best impression of the power because I know what you're thinking. You're thinking 250 watts, it's not enough. And I would agree with you most of the time, but let's see what it does. Uh, let's see. Hogdoc says, I'll take it back. Looks like a nice bike. It, I think, honestly, yeah, it, it does look really nice. Compared to a lot of bikes I review, today has been awesome. Electric Bike Company was $13.99 and looked amazing. This at $2,000, not the same person who's going to buy this because of the power setup. But it's a really nice looking bike, I think, for the price. Uh, yeah, as Michael Horton says, pretty stealth. Uh, Yep, Bill, 80 newton meters of torque. Uh, Rob, top speed, I don't know. There is no sticker on this bike. We could check on their website. Since it doesn't have a throttle on it, you could legally have this set at 28 miles an hour. And with all the gears, maybe it would do it. I don't know. Let's hop on it and see what it can do. And uh, I had uh, one of the guys in the shop uh, rode it a little bit before this video. Uh, and his comment on it was that it was very smooth. He liked how the motor felt. Uh, when he first looked at it, he was kind of like, oh, only 250 watts. And then he rode it and he was like, wow, that actually was pretty impressive. Uh, he, was, he was surprised. So battery is at reading 86%. We have a little color display. It's actually the same one that's on our trikes now. Uh, we've got miles per hour, uh, pedal assist, which is a one through five, uh, and then an odometer reading. So uh, I'm going to put it on zero first because I feel like it's important to show on a bike like this. This is a, what I think is a good quality bike. You could pedal without even using the throttle. So I'm going to shift down a couple of gears here. Yeah, I mean, I have a, a mountain bike, it's not too dissimilar from this, a hard tail, just trail bike. And obviously the trail bike that I've got is not being an e-bike, pedals really easy, but I mean, you could put somebody on this thing not even tell them that it's an e-bike. And if it wasn't for the display, they realistically might not even notice. I mean, they, I, I feel like you, you could honestly get away with that. Pedal's really nice. So this is no assist at all. I'm just pedaling around. I mean, <laughs> this, is, this is not something I can easily do on many other e-bikes. You can just easily pop the front wheel off the ground like nothing. And that's with no power on. So pedal assist one, again, torque sensing. Here, a little bit of a motor whine. Two, and now we gotta start shifting through the gears. And we'll crank it up to five just for fun. Now you have to pedal hard because it's a torque sensor, no throttle. If you want to get more speed, you got to pedal harder. But I'm going to do my best to kind of simulate for you guys, if you will, what it would be like if it had a throttle. Because I usually do a stop and a throttle. So you got to get a feel for what the, the pep is off the line. So, um, which actually, to do a fair test of this, I should have it in the lowest gear. So there we go. This is one up front, one in 
back and we're our pedal assist is up to five and i'm just going to give it a nice hard pedal stroke so you can see how it takes off and here we go i think i gotta move where i'm on camera a little bit more because it takes me a second to get the pedal strokes really really going and pumping so let's try that one more time and off it goes and you you kind of run out of steam because you get to there and now I have to I have to shift up because I'm not putting any pressure against the pedals being a torque sensor. I got to keep shifting up through the gears so I can go faster. All right. And that's one and one. So I don't know what the top speed is, and we can't even test that unloaded because there's not a throttle. Uh, let's see, questions. Uh, not 26 gears, only 16. Thank you. Um, let's see, diff style. Wish Bolton would make a fat tire e-bike with long passenger seat like the aerial rider. Perhaps one day we've offered some cargo bikes and things in the past. Never really sold that many of them. So that's why you don't see anything like that from us right now. Um, I'd have to go do a test on a top speed. Uh, I guess what I should do is just real quickly, I'll turn the camera back to the road. What I'm going to do is go up the hill. I'm going to go out of camera frame for a second, come back down and just feel where the motor cuts off. So I can tell you if this cuts off at 20 miles an hour or 28. Because I think in the right gear, because it's torque sensing, you got to put the effort in. But I wouldn't be surprised if this would go 28. Uh, 20 should be a piece of cake. 28 may just depend on uh, the uh, settings, which since I'm at it, I'm going to go into the settings right now. Oh, yeah. And that, that says in the settings, 36 volt. So it's definitely... A 36 volt battery auto off wheel size advanced can we adjust oh there's a password setting i don't know what the password is on this bike so there probably is a uh, upper speed limit set on this thing i bet but i don't know what that password is we could find out but if you guys want to see a st top speed robert says go ride uh yeah uh, Russ says 20 miles an hour. I believe that. Let's go confirm. So I'm going up the hill. And since I'm going to go up the hill, I'll give you guys a... Uh, you're going to see me pass by in a second here going up. Put the head in. Get a little exercise. We're doing 12 and a half miles an hour. 13. All right, that was 24. When you get going faster, the wind noise and the road noise and the airplanes <laughs> was loud enough. I actually couldn't hear the motor. They got these, some sort of old World War II trainer flying around up there making racket. Um, I definitely heard the motor over 20 like 21 22 and then it was so quiet i couldn't tell so i would have to take this on a further ride flatter out way way off camera where i might lose you so i'm not going to do that but i think it's got the power to 
do well over 20 as long as it can be unlocked, which I think if you have the passcode, you could totally do on this display. So I would say would make perfect sense if it's a class one, uh, but I don't see why you couldn't classify this as a class three if you wanted to um, increase the speed limit. It's just never gonna be a class two because there's no throttle. <laughs> but it was fun. I was actually getting a, a bit of a, a, bit of a, a workout there, uh, trying to get that pedal assist going by getting on that torque sensor. Uh, with the Bafang torque sensors, you've got a throttle. You can override the torque sensor if you want to. With this one, you don't have a choice. You want to go faster, you got to pedal harder. <laughs> even in the Assist 5, the assist levels make a difference. But even in Assist 5, you have to pedal your hardest to get the most out of the motor. So uh, there it is. This is uh, honestly not what I was expecting. You know, when I, I got the uh, information to review this bike, wasn't sure how I'd like it. Um, but honestly, I, I do. Uh, I feel like I've got a lot of friends, people who are mountain bikers that would hop on this and they would, they would ride it and go crazy with it and have a ton of fun with it. Uh, because very reasonably priced, you know, you could pick one of these up alongside your, your regular mountain bike and uh, have a lot of fun with it. I personally probably not gonna, you know, keep this one as a personal bike, even though I do like it, the way it rides. Uh, and the only reason for that is we have uh, a powerful, way more capable trail bike coming. It's gonna be a lot more expensive than this. You know, we're talking um, closer to the $5,000 range uh, and something even higher than that coming very, very soon that I'm really excited about showing you guys, but that's a throttle bike, you know, Bafang mid drives um, with a twist, not just a Bafang mid drive, really looking forward to that. But this is a really fun bike. Um, I have really no issues with it. I mean, it'd be nice if it came with a bigger battery, uh, but it's a low power setting. You realistically will get decent range out of this guy. Uh, I think, for the small weight penalty, if they offer a 500 watt battery, yeah, I'd go for that. Uh, Robert says enough for the trails, not bad for the money. I agree. I think it's a, a good bike. If you were to compare this bike at $2,000 to other 1500 to $2,000 bikes with the hub motors, this bike looks a lot better. Just quality wise, fit finish wise, it looks very nice. It's a, it's a well done bike. And uh, I think in Europe, these would sell extremely well. In the US, I don't know. It's a good question. Are we gonna see a lot of these bikes selling at these wattage levels? I know that they are with the name brands. Are people gonna spend that kind of money without a name brand motor in it? You know, the motor's been around for a few years. And uh, like I said, I think I've seen this particular motor before. Uh, and if it is the motor I'm thinking of, I sold one to a local customer, very similar mountain bike. He's had it for the last, I don't know, three, four years. Um, and he brought it in for one, one thing on the motor had to be tightened up uh, on the outside. Uh, we tightened it up and then it was good to go. I haven't had any other issues with it. So uh, anyway, a lot of fun. Uh, I think, uh, I think uh, this bike's gonna be worth checking out if you're looking for a torque sensing mountain bike. That's what this is. Uh, again, Avidar is the company that's making it. So good job, guys. And don't forget all of you to come back tomorrow for three more live reviews. Going to start those Saturday morning and we will send out emails, text messages, everything, or just uh, check back on the YouTube channel uh, for more information. Turbo Ant, folding bike, Troxus, uh basically hub motor hardtail fat bike we've seen a lot of bikes like this and i mean a lot uh and then over in the corner the pasilek full suspension fat tire bike that's what we got tomorrow thank you guys i will see you hopefully tomorrow and that is a wrap for today have fun ride safe <laughs>